Some of the denominators in your uh, exercises there are just monomials. Um, some of them are binomials. Uh, some of your problems have just one binomial in each denominator. Some of them have one binomial in one denominator and two in the other. And some of them are like this one, where there's two in each. And it doesn't actually matter how many binomials are in your denominator, if there's two, three, or if there's just one. If there's one binomial and one monomial, your lowest common denominator is just going to be a list of all of the unique binomials. By that I mean we have an x plus 3 and an x plus 4 in this denominator, and an x plus 4 and an x plus 5 in that denominator. The x plus 4 is already in common. We don't need to repeat that. But this is missing an x plus 3, and this is missing an x plus 5. That list of three binomials is going to be our common denominator. So x plus 3 times x plus 4 times x plus 5 minus something. x plus 3, x plus 4, x plus 5. So we have to multiply the bottom here by an x plus 5. So we multiply the top by an x plus 5. x plus 5 times x plus 1 x times x is x squared, x times 1 is 1x, 5 times x is 5x, that's plus 6x, 5 times 1 is 5. So that gives me that on the top. Multiply out the tops, because we're going to have to combine like terms. Don't bother to multiply out the bottoms. Remember that from the previous video. Don't multiply out the bottoms until the end. Always check to make sure something uh, doesn't factor or reduce with the, with the numerator. Most of the time it won't, but sometimes it will. So don't, don't expand out the denominator. You never have to. If you want to, by all means, go for it. But you never have to. Uh, denominator over here is missing an x plus 3. So we do x plus 3 on the top. x times x is x squared. x times 3 is 3x. 2 times x is 2x, so that's plus 5x. Plus 6, because 2 times 3 is 6. Now, be very, very careful about this next step. This is a subtraction problem, which means I'm taking all of these, the x plus 6, x plus 5, and from that I'm subtracting all of the second, x squared plus 5, x plus 6. Be very careful when you are doing a problem that involves subtracting that you distribute that negative sign to everything in the numerator. We're subtracting all of that stuff. So it's going to be minus, if I distribute the, the negative sign here, it's going to be minus an x squared, minus a 5x, and minus a 6. <coughs> so that gives me, that should be x squared, x squared minus x squared, well they cancel. 6x minus 5x is x. 5 minus 6 is minus 1. So I get x minus 1 all over x plus 3, x plus 4, x plus 5. That's my answer. x minus 1 all over x plus 3 times x plus 4 times x plus 5. Again, you don't have to expand them out. If you do, for whatever reason, want to expand it out, and you'll get x minus 1 over x cubed plus 12x squared plus 47x plus 60, go crazy. If that's what you want to do, then do that. But don't feel like you have to. You really don't have to do that part. This is perfectly satisfactory. Because what we would want to see is if anything in the numerator cancels with anything in the denominator. And of course they don't. There's no x minus 1 down there. If there were an x minus 1 as part of the denominator, then we would need to cancel, but there's nothing. So again, back to here. Be very careful when subtracting that you distribute the negative sign to everything in the second numerator. That you distribute that negative sign. Beyond that, this is a fairly straightforward process. It can get a little bit tricky, a little bit tedious. It might take a little bit of a while, um, but ultimately there shouldn't be too much difficulty.